Hey, everybody. What did you think of that Dynamite show last night? Was that Dynamite or what? Should we just get started with that? Let's do it. Dynamite last night. John Moxley defeated Wheeler Yuta in the opener. Wheeler Yuta was the replacement for Brian Kendrick, who is uh, not involved with AEW or WWE at that point. He issued an apology for some comments that he had made that got him removed from the show. He said, I apologize for all the hurt and embarrassment I have caused with my words. These are not my beliefs, never were beliefs of mine. And I crossed the line. I spread the most vile comments without thinking of the damage it would cause. I will live with this regret for the rest of my life. I am truly sorry for the pain that I have caused. So, uh, no Brian Kendrick. I don't think we're going to see, be uh, seeing Brian Kendrick anytime soon. But uh, he was replaced by Wheeler Yuta. Poor Wheeler Yuta. Killed for the second time by John Moxley. What a storyline this is becoming. Moxley hit him with the uh, paradigm shift, pinned him. Dan Housen was there at ringside. Apparently he's one of the best friends now. And uh, that was the opener. Then Brian Danielson appeared. And he cut a uh, definitely a heel promo. And Moxley is definitely a babyface. But uh, Brian Danielson at first wanted to fight him. But then said, you know what? Maybe we should team. And he had this idea about taking these young guys under his wing, the Yudas, Garcias, Lee Moriarty's. And uh, he told Moxie to think about whether he wants to be a team with him or not. We had a Brandy Rhodes segment with Dan Lambert. Uh, this was, as I noted last night, a dated reference. But I think, there, is there still a Jerry Springer show? There has to be, right? There, there's still a Steve Wilkos. But, Steve uh, Wilkos? Might as well be a Jerry Springer one. Well, anyway, that's what this there's was. There's a Judge Jerry now. She goes out there, she's hated. Lambert goes out there, he's hated. They're throwing insults back and forth, and they'd throw one insult, they'd get a cheer. Then they'd get booed. And essentially, this all led to Paige Van Zant returning to attack Brandy. They got pulled apart, and the fans chanted, let them fight. So whatever you thought of this segment, fans want to see Paige Van Zant and Brandy Rhodes fight. And what a battle we're in store for here. What a fight it is. We had Malachi Black and Brody King beating Pac and Penta, which was a good match. Hit their finish for the win after the mist got sprayed. I feel like if this had been on pay-per-view, it would have been like five times better. But there's certainly nothing wrong with it. It was just a, uh, seemed like a fairly quick television match. Uh, by quick, I mean like eight minutes, but that was that. Adam Cole is going to face Evil Uno on Rampage. I won't give you any spoilers. Nyla Rose beat Ruby Soho when uh, Ruby tried to do her kick. Uh, missed by nine miles, and then uh, Nyla Rose power bombed her and pinned her. Uh, the match was was uh, it was all right. I wouldn't say it was a bad match or anything like that, but the finish definitely looked bad. I, I think that uh, I don't know what was supposed to happen, um, but she missed and she was pinned. That's what happened, and the fans saw it as a botch. We had a Hangman Page promo, and uh, thank God. Lance Archer came out and beat the absolute hell out of the hangman, pummeled him, destroyed him, threw him into the steps, gave him the blackout through a table, left him for dead. I've been talking about this for weeks. It's what they needed to do. And you know what? Hangman's going to be all right. And he's going to beat this guy in the Texas death match dominantly. And I don't want to hear anything about how he's ruined or he looks weak. It's going to be all right. Jericho promo where he basically said there's going to be a meeting with the inner circle next week and uh, everyone needs to be there because there's problems in the inner circle. And then the main event at 10 minutes after the top of the hour, they brought out MGF and CM Punk. So uh, they had, I believe, a 39 minute match. And the story of the match very quickly was that uh, MGF took off his wrist tape wrapped it around Punk's neck, put him in a choke, and uh, the referee raised the hand once. He raised the hand twice, and it drops a third time, and he goes, ring the bell! There's people shocked that CM Punk has been choked unconscious by MJF. MJF puts the tape in his armpit, and he goes up, and he does the referee raises his hand, and the tape falls out. 
Ref goes, no, brother. This ain't happening here in Chicago. Restart this match. MJF's furious. The fans are like, yeah. They went 25 more minutes. And in those 25 minutes, out comes, out comes old Wardlow. And Wardlow gets face-to-face with CM Punk. And everyone thinks, are they going to fight? What's going to happen here? And Wardlow just backs off. And everyone's like, yeah, he's going to let uh, gonna let Punk win. Punk gets in the ring. But Wardlow's creeping around again. Punk's distracted. He turns around and kablammy! MGF punches him with the ring. Makes the cover. One, two, three. This time he's smart. He gets the ring back to Wardlow so the ref don't find it. And uh, MGF has beaten CM Punk twice on the same show in Chicago, Illinois. And after the match is over, and I love the way they did it after the match was over, they're showing replays of everything. And when they do the face-to-face, what we did not see, and this was not a botch where we they missed the shot. We weren't supposed to see it. But you see Wardlow put his hand behind his back and pass that ring to MJF. So they are they are stretching it out again. Wardlow handed MJF the ring, which MJF used to beat CM Punk. I mean, there's there's a number of ways they can go. I think what they're gonna do is CM Punk and MJF will have a match at the pay-per-view, and it's gonna be Adam Cole versus Hangman Page in the championship match. I saw this show and I was like, bro, they got to go to MJF versus Hangman. This guy beat CM Punk twice in Chicago. Punk got beaten because of Wardlow. So you do Wardlow at the pay per view against CM Punk. I don't think that's the direction we're going, but that's what I thought we should be doing after the show is over. But we'll we'll see. I mean, the only question I have is if they do Adam Cole and Hangman and CM Punk and MJF in a stip match, what do you do with Wardlow? He just beat some bloke? I guess you could do that, but... What did you think of the show, Mike? I thought that was a hell of a main event. I thought it was pretty damn awesome because that main event was pretty great, and I know you're not big on those long. matches. By the way, where's, where's old Lance, who on the show last week said he was 100% sure, I think he said, that CM <laughs> Punk was beating MJF, huh? Where are you now, Lance? Well, you're going to find out tomorrow when you do the Figure Four Daily with Lance Storm. That's Only right. for subscribers at F4WOnline.com and F4W Video. All you top It's rare that Lance is wrong, but when he is, I don't. I <laughs> love rubbing it in. I was going to say, now, did you let him know about this in DMs and emails and such? Oh, no, no. <laughs> you just want to save it all up? Well, I, I gave it away early, but yeah. Now, you don't want to like say that this theme. match went too long, do you? 45 minutes, Listen, you want to say they could have told that story quicker? Because I, I don't think they could have. I would not say that this went too long, but but there were moments where the crowd... I don't, I don't want to say they lost the crowd, because when you lose the crowd, like they're lost. They just never come back. Uh, but the crowd got quiet there at about, uh, I'd say about 10 minutes to the top of the hour. Because I think, A, they figured that Punk had to be winning, and B, I think they also, some of them probably thought it might go to like the TV time limit draw and not beat either guy. And they didn't either. They beat him two times in his hometown. Hey, I'll say this. I think in hindsight, it was a bad idea to beat Adam Cole with Orange Cassidy. And I know it's on, it's you know Thank not you. on his record and all that other stuff. But ultimately, how that thing is playing out with Adam Cole getting the next shot, I am. I don't want to say flabbergasted, but you do. I shrug my shoulders and say, why? You know, I think that was a mistake, especially when you're coming off of Lance Archer, who, you know, he's he's cold. He's cold. That's why you're doing some of the things that you're doing leading into this. But, you know, that's uh, maybe a story for another day. You know what it is, Mike? It's a story for another segment. Oh. Coming up after the break, Observer Live. Wrestling Observer Alive. Uh, Mike Sempervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Boss, I got a problem here with the chat here after it was mentioned that maybe Adam Cole should not have lost Orange Cassidy and you get people, he's going to be fine. Just no one said he wasn't going to be fine. Exactly. Just because he's going to be fine doesn't mean that it's not something that you should have done. Okay? Here's the thing, That's everybody. Here's the thing. Okay. It, it, it's less of an issue with Adam Cole than it was with uh, with Lance Archer. But if you think that uh, Lance Archer is beating Hangman Page, 
raise your hand. Nobody? Okay. If you think Adam Cole is beating Hangman Page, raise your hand. Nobody? Okay. Hey, Mike, come on. He ain't beating Hangman Page. Okay. They, they ain't spending two years building up Hangman Page to finally give him the title and then beat him two months in with Adam Cole. It's just not happening. I don't think so. But hey, look, it doesn't mean it has to happen in the first attempt. But here's my point, okay? If you have a if you have an opponent, okay, where okay, three guys think Adam Cole's going to win. If you have an opponent where three guys out of 10,000 think the guy's going to win, then he needs all the help he can get before the match, okay? True. I don't want to hear this crap about, "Oh, they're trying to make Adam Page a great babyface champion." Therefore, he can never be weak. He can never... Bro, get out of here. What do you think this is? WWE? Dude, somebody on the board the other day... I, I mean, I, I can't even believe that there's all these arguments about Archer and Hangman. I mean, nobody ever brought up the reign of Hulk Hogan in the 80s. The whole story of Hulk Hogan's reign was get ass kicked, win next match. That's all it was for seven years. And don't tell me it didn't work. And don't tell me that Hulk Hogan wasn't Superman. Don't tell me any of that crap, okay? Hangman Page is going to beat decisively Lance Archer in their match. So, yeah, if you have a guy that hasn't been around for three months or whatever, he can lay out Hangman for three straight weeks, and then Hangman beats him. Adam Cole should not have done any sort of job if he's going to be challenging Hangman Page for the title, he just shouldn't have, okay? Is it the end of the world? No. Is he going to be fine? Yes. Is the pay-per-view going to still sell? Yes. But would it have been better if he hadn't lost to Orange Cassidy? If you want to convince me that maybe Adam Page is going to beat him? Yes, of course. That's it. No one said it's the end of the world. Nobody's freaking out about it, even though I'm yelling. It's it's going to be fine, but it would have been better if you hadn't have beaten Adam Cole last week on Rampage. Golly gee willikers. You heard me. Watch that kind of language. The FCC might come after you. Put us on delay. I feel like, you know what's funny is, even though I'm the one that yells and screams all the time, I feel like I'm the calm one. Like everybody else is freaking out over everything. Well, it's because this is very cathartic for you, and this is just how you are all the time. I mean, I, I raise my voice here and there. Here and there. Yeah. You had a lot of nerve. Maybe regularly. <laughs> but I didn't spend a million dollars on this setup here with this, you know, vintage He's... compressor, this vintage tube compressor. But not and yell. <laughs> what? Nothing. Okay. CM Punk versus Garcia. Fast moving, neck breaker, leg sub hold on. I got a P. P gets leg. <laughs> 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 this was 10 8 21. Clothesline. Pill Pillman punches back and forth. How'd Pillman get in this match? <laughs> I don't know. How What's happening? Know? If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.